Hi everyone, this is Beth Vettil. I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about septic bursitis. So bursa is any synovium lined space uh, which often overlies joints and it can fill with fluid um, physiologically and if there is an inflammatory component to it, we can term it bursitis. Now sometimes the bursa may get infected. It's usually it is Staph aureus or Staphylococcus aureus that does the infection. So 80 to 90% of the time we would uh, be able to uh, culture Staphylococcus aureus from it. Now, how does it happen? It can happen by three ways. One is direct inoculation. So if there's any joint uh, injection done and septic precautions are not followed, so that, that can be direct inoculation. The other is local spread. So if there's any infection in the surrounding muscles, surrounding bones, surrounding joint, and it can spread locally from the infected part to the bursa. And the third is hematogenous. So the infection can originate in some other part of the body and the blood can carry it from that part to the bursa and this can result in septic bursitis. So what would you see on MRI? So MRI, you would see the, the telltale signs of an abscess. So you would see peripheral enhancement. This can also be seen on uh, post-contrast CT, but you would see peripheral enhancement. You may even see synovial thickening because it is a synovium lined space. So you would see synovial thickening, peripheral enhancement, and as the infection progresses, you would see more signs of the surrounding edema and enhancement. So this is uh, a sign to treat, drain the abscess and treat with appropriate antibiotics.